part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Before we begin today's podcast, I'm going to get real for a second. I'm actually outside of taking a walk. It's what I do when I have stuff on my mind. Um, this is kind of a moment of silence for a podcast that I have been looking forward to recording for a while. They kept getting delayed. Um, as some of you may know, a, pod- a friend, a podcasting friend of ours, Charlie Esser, had passed away. He was the host of Super Connectivity and part of the Capes of Lunatics. I just did a tribute podcast to him. <laughs> For years, Charlie always defended Superman 3. And I always said, Charlie, we're going to have to actually podcast on it, you and I. It's like a really good conversation. And I kept, I put it off because we didn't line up our schedule when we did our commentary track for it. And then this year was the re- the 40th anniversary. And uh, I remember I was sitting in the car, and it popped up that it was the 40th anniversary on my phone. I was like, oh, yes. I knew it was coming up. Now i got to email Charlie. Let's get this going. You know, so I always say that that's my least favorite. And I was like, I'll, I'll rewatch it, and Charlie and I can discuss it. And just... Moments later, I found out he passed. Now, why I've, this is what I want to say is just don't take people for granted. You know, podcasting is cool because I connect with people from all over the place. I mean, you've heard me tell my story of how I met James and how I appreciate that guy. He's probably not going to hear this, but who cares? Um, Phil, my friend. Next year will be 10 years of podcasting. Um, But even the people closest to you that you see every day. And that may be your neighbor, your best friend. Just enjoy every minute. Respect the time. Don't leave out any regrets for if that person just was gone. Don't have stuff left in the future that you never got around to doing. So I mourn the loss of someone who had a great podcasting voice and insight and just remember to take care of each other before we start this episode of krypton report i want to take a moment and just give a shout out here to our patreon i know what you're thinking gosh everyone's asking for money and i get it but our patreon is only a dollar one dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going and what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about we've done as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car, and it's kind of funny. And we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken on some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also, what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreon special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report Podcast. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me, as always, is the man in red with a beard. The <laughs> Superman beard. of red. <laughs> 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 that holly jolly fat man, Mr. James Cole. <laughs> We're a little far off from Christmas. <laughs> We're almost at Christmas with July, man. It's always was, Christmas in, in my house, yeah. giving and happiness and love and goodwill towards man you know all that good stuff oh that's great uh i just want to say it's nice to record when there's a little bit of sunlight still left outside usually we, we either record like late at night 
and sometimes we try to record in the morning, but uh, it doesn't always work out, but this is nice. This is, this is nice. A little bit of sunlight coming in through here, but my plants are overgrown, so my window is starting to look like a forest, so it doesn't matter there's sun shining through. You can't see. But um, Anyways, how you doing, man? I feel like it's been forever. Uh, it's been a little bit, but um, I'm doing okay. We had a, a wedding to go to the other night, so that was fun. Crack a cold one. And by cold one, a fresh, refreshing Coca-Cola. We are also taking sponsorships if Coca-Cola will sponsor us. <laughs> and when I'm addicted to Cherry Coke, and uh, I would happily praise your product for money. <clears throat> Just give me a shout, and uh, it'll be there. But hey, man, we got a lot to talk about, kind of. Some interesting points going on and we're just going to kind of dive into some news and really random stuff but are you ready i'm ready so the penguin show that we all know that's coming to max has been put on hold until the writer strike ends that makes sense yeah, yeah and i saw the halt production so i'm like okay you know but i mean um I'm I'm I wonder how much they've shot already if they're gonna finish it and then like put it out there or something but I don't know I fi- I figure I figure we'll probably get that show next year I I would assume um, you know I figure we might get Waller and the Penguin maybe next year as some sort of DC kind of something you know no big movie I mean we have Joker too but that's let's face it that's not really what we're talking about um but something else you know just to kind of keep some sort of dc flavor before 2025 um yeah i mean this the writer strike definitely has put a damper on on their productions and their schedules and all that that kind of stuff but um i mean people need their people need their fair their fair treatment and wages and everything else so um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, they gave us like what a penguin red logo, <laughs> just yeah, I mean, as the penguin. And it's in the same kind of black red font as the Batman, which I like, Yeah, you know, tying the brand together. Give us like a two episode short, the Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just going to be the, yes, the, the white stripes, the sums. Green Day 75. If you understand that reference, you're a cool person. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, so I got – this has been leaked. The cast – this is what we kind of theorized. The cast that's leaving Superman and Lois is going to be Sam Lane, the Cushing family, the Irons, and Chrissy Beppo are all being removed from being uh, main cast members and could be – uh, slot is just returning or guest stars, and we're we're one episode away from the finale of this season. And some people have theorized: Are they going to move the show to Metropolis or something? You know, because of the Lex Luthor, um, you know, and not because all those characters make up Smallville. You know, so it's interesting those storylines. What will happen with them? But it looks like we'll be maneuvering away from them being main cast members. And, I mean, this season already we've had, what, two or three episodes without John Henry? Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of curious what that's going to be like um, for the next season. Right. Well, I'm curious as to how it's going to go as it is because, like, the main villain of the season's, season has been um, – Manheim and everything, and uh, we he kind of surrendered himself in the in that last episode there. So, and we'll, we'll I mean we'll get into it like with this episode where they're I think they're really setting the the seeds for next season. So, but I just thought that was interesting. You know, we we kind of theorized that they would kind of use them more as. Guest stars and wove them, weaving them, weaved in. in yeah. I wonder what the yeah. I just wonder what the um, plan is for next season. 
I don't know. I'm probably thought after the writer strike. So it's gonna be interesting. You know what's so funny is like we were about to like oh we're after this we're gonna get you know we're gonna have to find a way to find a show to continue reviewing you know but we're gonna have my adventures with Superman which I don't know how long how many episodes that will be you know to hold us over and then we'll figure out what to do after that and Ruby Spears <laughs> and there's always comics of course we know we know people we know. Uh, but this was interesting. There was some sort of like Warner Brothers thing. Like I saw one post, so I'm gonna repeat it. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it was about announce. It was an announcement about animation projects. And all it said was, "I looked for a bigger article." Was Beast Boy, Lone Wolf, My Adventures with Superman, Batman: The Cape Crusader, the Merry Little Batman film, which looked atrocious, with a Bat Family spinoff. Kite Man, hell yeah, and Creature Commandos. And I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, but I, there was a quote from Bruce Tim about <clears throat> Cape Crusader is everything he wanted to do in the original Batman the Animated Series, but couldn't because it was on the kids channel. Now, what does that mean to you, James? Because it was on the kids channel, uh I mean, I'm guessing they wanted to do stuff a little no, I, more of a, of a mature angle. I, I'm like, man, please don't tell me you're going to try to go back to like you did with the killing joke and have Batman trying to bang Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, come on, Bruce Tim. Like, give us a – I want a good Batman anime. I want a good cartoon I can watch with my children and just enjoy. You know? <laughs> like, beware the Batman was too weird and dark and not fun. Justice League action was awesome, and you guys canceled it. You know, it's like, uh, and Batwheels is like just too odd. <laughs> like it's it's even even my kids are like, eh. <laughs> you know, like your daughter's your daughter's probably like, f that. Like, and she watched real... a little bit, but she didn't follow it too much. She's like, show me the real Batman. I don't care about his car. She's not really only one, so it's just. That's, why like, that's what makes it so funny, James. Is this? She's the audience. <laughs> she's the audience, and she's like, eh. So I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of like okay, but we did get that Harley Quinn season four will be dropping on July 27th. So yay, Harley Quinn. James's favorite show. He loved that uh, special, holiday special. Him and Bane. Uh, it was hysterical. I mean, I'm looking forward to season four. I mean, it's going to be interesting. But speaking of four, I guess there's a four-hour cut of The Flash. And I listened to... I listened to a Real Blend podcast with Andy Muschietti. And he talked about a scene that was cut that talked a little bit more about Bruce and what Bruce was had been into. And and by Bruce, I mean Keaton Bruce. Right. And I hope it's released because um, I really want to see it. But I found most interesting was them talking about how they did the Ezra and Ezra stuff. So I would really like to see that as a special feature. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing some of those special features for the Flash. The poor Flash is not doing so well at the box office. And, I mean, I saw one person uh, hypothesize about, like, the importance that we don't think about for marketing of, like, late-night TV. And since the writer's strike, there is no late-night TV. And how that's a way to promote a film and, you know, bring awareness to something. And I was like, okay. But I'm just like, I don't, even with the Ezra of it all, like, I just don't know why this movie is not doing better. I do think it's an oversaturated month um, with there being something every weekend. And people are just now getting back out to the theaters on a more continual basis. Right. Yeah. Maybe not going to the theater every single weekend. But, I mean, let's look back, like, Dungeons and Dragons. That was a fun movie. But we yes, didn't make it, it we didn't get to make it to the theater because that entire month, March was um 
March was packed. You know? And then the week after was the Mario movie. And then there was, like, nothing. <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, you know, competition is good. I get that. But spacing your film out that you have a chance of doing well. You know, when Blue Beetle comes out here in August, um, I think in August there's Blue Beetle, The Meg 2. I feel like there's one more thing that comes out in August that is more general audience-ish. Ish. So, I don't know. But I, I'm sorry for everyone who worked hard on The Flash. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I mean, I am as well. It's um, it the movie is better than than the box office is showing. Kind of the same thing we had said about Shazam. Um, you know, the movie's better than that, but you know, it's it's hard to say. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors that can really push this movie, or, or that has pushed this movie away from general audiences. And, you know, I put out a thing today. I was like, you know, I wonder how fast they'll put it out on digital. Because, like, Black Adam was like a month, right? Because it came out October 21st. And it was on digital right before Thanksgiving. So it was like a little over a month. And Shazam was under a month. Um, Super Pets was under a month. Super was like three weeks. It, it was because we that was thought, uh, that was like insane. That was a quick turnaround. What was it like maybe twenty three days or was it yeah. less than three? Because I, I find, <laughs> it was like we went and saw it, and then we went the next week, and then I think like the week after that, uh, it was like we bought it digitally. Like it felt like it was like three weeks. I mean, it was, it was fast. Um, and so I'm just like, this one has been hyped up. You know, they're not doing the as fast on Max like they were. You know, they're t- it's like they're taking their time more. Like, I don't think the Flash will be on Max probably till September. Right. Yeah. So I'm just like, I don't know, like you know, Fast X, for example, turned around. And it was on it was on digital rent or buy in like thirty days or a little under thirty days. You know, and that's not it part of this whole WB thing. So it's not unheard of, but I feel like they might want to try to recoup as much money faster by throwing it out there for people to buy. I don't know. But speaking of fast, Christina Hodson, who wrote Birds of Prey and The Flash, will not be writing The Brave and The Bold. She opted to write Fast 11. Let that sink in for a minute. She wanted to write Fast 11. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. Good job. Good luck, you know. Not winning any awards on writing for that one. And this is confusing. Uh, this is one of those gotta love it Hollywood type quotes. Gal Gadot says, "Things are being worked behind the scenes, and once the right moments arrive, you'll know about it." About her return as Wonder Woman, and we had reported that she was pretty much done. So, don't hold your breath. You know, yeah, I mean, at this point, it's just really, it really, really is only um, a waiting game to see what they do. Um, you know, kind of after this this last weekend, in Aqu- it, I mean, after- it might in the box office. It might just seem like it's time to kind of sever those and and start fresh, start new. And um, I think we might see a bigger tick in that after Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know we have. So I know we have Blue Beetle coming up, um, and and we can see some of the tone of Blue Beetle. Being much lighter, but I hope that it doesn't steer towards that, towards some of, some of the humor that we got from the Flash. You know, I did mention too many dick jokes. 
Yep, it's um, true. Repeating a, a lasso joke with ridiculous, two ridiculous proportions. This isn't a Kevin Smith film, okay? Um, yeah, so, um, I just, I hope that, uh, I hope that Blue Beetle is a little fresh. I hope now, so. No, too. no ties to anything. It kind of, it, it, the character really doesn't for the most part. I mean, he's, He's in uh, the American Southwest, which is far away from a lot of, especially the big characters and everything that we've known and dealt with so far. So he's, he's very out of the way mm-hmm. in, in his own little corner, and hopefully that'll give us a little bit of a, a little bit more of a fresh um, character to connect with. I agree. I I agree, and it'll be interesting to see um, <clears throat> what happens with good old the Beetle of the Blue. And I'm looking forward to that. I actually just started getting into Cobra Kai and watched the first season. Um, I have not watched any of it yet. Um, I've always been interested, but I didn't have YouTube Red when it started, so I never really watched it. I never got into it, and then you know, a few years ago in like 2020 when it dropped on. Or twenty, yeah, maybe twenty twenty when it dropped on Netflix. Um, I was interested, but I never got around to watching it. And obviously, you know, with this movie coming out, kind of forced my hand. And I was excited to do so, and I'm enjoying it so far. Cool. Have you watched it? Nope. No. Oh, okay. I, I mean, Brian keeps telling me I need to, and it's kind of like in the back. Like, okay, I'll get there. You know. But well, I do think I, I do think so. If you if you enjoyed the Karate Kid movies, I um, did. But it's just they never they never stuck with me like some people. Right, like, love the Karate Kid. Like it was. <laughs> cool. Um, I feel like we're such a weird generation. I'm gonna go on a tangent here, <laughs> because we came right like we were starting to come up right at the end of the '80s. So there's so much of that '80s stuff that kind of was held over that we touched on in our youth. But then, like, our stuff started, and then, like, our real childhood-type stuff is starting to come back. And But so much of our kind of childhood stuff was the resurgence of established properties, like X-Men the Animated Series, Batman the Animated Series, Spider-Man the Animated Series, you know, uh, all these properties that had been around that were just being reintroduced, you know, um, that we continue. We see. I think that's why Power Ranger stands out so big for us, is because that was like something more "quote unquote" original from our childhood. But how many things do like we connect to? Because like it was kind of there, you know. Like Brian really launches onto a lot more of it than I do, but like Thundercats, He Man, um, Ghostbusters, Transformers. For being younger, Brian is an old old man. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know There's what I'm saying. One old ass dude. Even turtles, like <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the animated series, like uh, everything. Like it was still, it was there, but it was like when we were really like young, and it was kind of on its way out while we were on our way up. So it's just interesting, you know what I'm saying? Um, so like Karate Kid was part of that, you know, all those '80s like stuff that people love. Right. I did okay, speaking of the eighties, I did see someone post that in nineteen eighty nine Indiana Jones was in theaters, Batman was in theaters, and so was Disney's animated The Little Mermaid. <laughs> and now here it's we kind are. of a weird year. <laughs> and then we just had the live action <laughs> Little Mermaid. Uh Michael Keaton's Batman reappeared and Indiana Jones will be out on Friday. That was weirdly nicely punctuated. Thank you, James's ringtone. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I just missed me silencing it too. <laughs> and then this is weird. Okay, we're talking about weird stuff. San Diego Comic Con's coming up, and it just San Diego hasn't bounced back, man, since before the pandemic because none of the major studios want to do anything. Like Warner Brothers isn't going to be there, but. 
DC films may be there. But like Netflix, Marvel, um, have already said they're not going to be there. So it's just kind of like now it's going back to just being like a comic book convention. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, if DC Films goes and nobody else does, I mean, they've got the corner. And they do have uh, a, a few film. projects in – they've got Blue Beetle. They've got Aquaman. Right. It would um, be perfect. Yeah. It would, it would be perfect. It would be a perfect stage if DC Films shows up to debut like a trailer for them but then release a, a – a smaller cut trailer for Aquaman and announce whoever you've cast for Superman legacy, you know, or do like, well, heck I don't even think they'll, I don't even think they'll go that far when it comes to that. You know, if anything, it'll be a little more information on something else already in production, like uh creature commandos or Waller um, or Waller. If or... that's been in production. I don't know if Penguin, they could release a trailer for Penguin and do something like a, but they, I, like they did with the Batman. But I'm just saying like, it's the 85th anniversary of Superman. Like they should have some sort of cool panel, you know, like back when they did the 75th, but it's 85. They're like, eh, we'll wait till a hundred. <laughs> um, and then, so there's all the talk about the, the, the Schumacher cut of Batman forever. And I don't know if you ever heard about like years ago, the red it's like the red notebook diary or cut or something. Yeah. Uh I'm like, is that the same thing? But I just listened to the Kevin Smith talk about it where like how he had gotten it and listened to the way he got a copy of it just makes me think it's that same red notebook or whatever cut that had been around for a while. Um and so I started reading my Batman uh forever book. Like I bought the novelization. Novel. So I'm like, I'm going to read this. Because I'm like, you know what? <sighs> I'm like, it's the, probably the closest I'll ever get. <laughs> um, so, like, if the Schumacher cut is as rough and everything as, as I hear, like, just release it online. Like, somebody just drop it online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of like somebody just find a work print of Batgirl and drop it online. It'll be okay. <laughs> Uh, and then McFarlane is releasing its Doomsday figure set of Superman battling Doomsday. And I'm going to tell you, buddy, I'm a little underwhelmed. <laughs> I am. I, uh, like I think you're underwhelmed just because we, we've we talked about how we would like Doomsday to just be this massive figure. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think Doomsday should be as big as Darkseid, Okay. And I have the 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 bat doomed or doom bat or whatever the the Darth Knight death metal like Batman that's like Doomsday is fighting yeah. Superman. I have that, okay. And that and this Doomsday is supposed to be bigger than that. Um, but I still feel like man, I still think you could have, and like Doomsday has like a man bun, so I still feel like you could have. Made Doomsday a little bit cooler. I don't know. What do you feel? Um, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, the look, it's very detailed. Um, I did kind of expect it to be a little bit bigger. Um, that's what she said. When I, when I, when they, when they showed the scale of standing, like Superman standing next to Doomsday, um, you know, I expected it to be a little bit larger, but, um, like to see how it actually stands up next to some of the other figures. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that looks. James like to see how it runs. See how it runs. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm looking at because it it's going to be a little bit bigger than this I have in front of me. So, but all right, that's all the news I have. Now it's just kind of for random discussion topics that I've typed out as I've been thinking about stuff. I did run a poll online, and I asked which speedster got the worst treatment on the Flash, and the response was Godspeed. And I pretty much knew that because Godspeed, having reread the comic, was awesome. Having seen the show, it was horrible. So take that. 
And the suit looked so cool. Yeah. Like, it was one of the best-looking speedster suits of the whole series. <laughs> so, it was a bummer. Um, Now, James, how many reviews of The Flash, um, how many different Flash podcasts have you listened to review The Flash? Oh, goodness. Um, You know what? Give me a second. <laughs> there's like there's one more I haven't listened to, and I wonder if you have. It was on my list, and I just haven't got to it yet. Let me see. I can easily tell you how many more I have left on here real quick. I have well, I have one more left on my queue. Which which one's one more? What do you have left? Uh, my su- the Supergirl. Okay, so uh, Supergirl Radio. I've done Supergirl Radio. Two different Batman on film social hours. Uh, the real blend, kind of talking about it. Uh, Fat Man Beyond, talking about it. I did. Um, oh crap! Hold on. Uh, why am I trying to blink? I'm trying to pull them up here. That's my problem. I did. Um, the Hall of Justice. I have not done Bat Force Radio, and I, I have the not Flash Podcast, the Hall of Justice, um, DC on Screen. Why am I drawing a blank? Why do I suck so bad? Uh, I did now playing. I did now playing. Um, uh, I did uh, the Fire Rises. I, I did, did the now Fire playing. Rises, and, and of course Holy Batcast. Holy Batcast. I have not uh, done DC Squadcast. That's okay. DC Squadcast and Bat Force Radio are the two I have not done. And always hold digging on. Digging for Kryptonite. Did digging for Kryptonite? Movie course, film. Did DC movie Alliance. Film. Um, I have not listened to. I have not listened to All Star yet. All Star Superfans yet. I'm getting there. So I have like three left. But anyways, listen to a lot of people talk about the Flash. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think that's about the end of my list. Um, and so I got thinking about some stuff that I have not people heard and something that we kind of missed over because we were both like exhausted when we talked about it, but there's a really great line that Ron Livingston gives as the father where he talks about, it's easier to live in prison with the thought that she's out there living her life than it would be to be out knowing that she's gone. And I was like, that was a really strong line that we kind of just glossed over and so um yeah i mean i agree uh at least i at least i can imagine she's out there right exactly um i will be i am happy to say my brother-in-law caleb who's cool dude that i would love to get on the show one day and for some reason could never just quite nailing down a talk he took uh he went and saw it today. He really loved the movie. And usually he's really hard on stuff. So it was cool. He was like, he messaged me a little bit ago. It's like, enjoy the flash, man. We'll talk about it when we get together. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> sweet. Cool. Like if I had to cast somebody in like my real life to be DC heroes, Caleb's who I would cast is like Black Adam. Or like Batman. Just because he's got that like grit and toughness. He's a good dude, but he'll like beat the shit out of you too. So <laughs> 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 Um, and then here's a question I I posed online was, would you prefer the film to done with time travel or bury multiverse, like jumping through the multiverse on different earths? Would we have preferred like him going to Keaton's earth or would we have preferred it to be like it was time travel? James, um, what, what would you have preferred? I, I prefer time travel, um, seeing as that's the genesis of the event of Flashpoint. Um, I mean, that's, that's what they, that's what the, that's what the inspiration for everything was. Um, so I just feel like that's probably the better way to go. You know, I kind of went back and forth at times because I, I like the time travel aspect, but just for something different where he goes to an earth and finds an earth where his mother lives, but then that earth is threatened and the only hero on that earth is an old Batman. And then he's trying like that's a whole different movie in the sense of, you know, then he brings together a new team and being, you know, you could get Supergirl and 
young Barry now and all this. So you could have that kind of as a separate earth. So if they're like, we're making movies about this earth over here now, but your, your other earth, your Snyder earth is over here, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> um, and then I've heard this rumor going around and someone actually made the audacity comment that if this person had showed up, it would actually save DC because they're the, they're the face of DC. And I just wanted to slap somebody in my mind. But do you think the ending of the flash would have been better had it been Christian Bale? Oh, um, I think it would have been less of a, I think it would have been accepted as less of a cheesy, um, cheesy for laughs cameo, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, but then I, you would get people expecting maybe that's the case if he comes back. I mean, people are expecting that maybe George Clooney is coming back for bad. People, people are dumb. We know this. Okay. So, um, I think it would have been a little more, a little better accepted, but I don't think it would have done anything to be like, bring people to the film because you had a hidden cameo of Christian Bale. Right. And that's, that's my thing is like, I don't feel like it would have mattered. Um, I, Christian Bale is not my favorite Batman. And I just feel like having, there's something about Keaton's Batman, even though he's in a universe all by himself, technically, that feels like it would be okay with having the Flash show up in it. But Christian Bale's universe is played so straight and so realistic that I don't feel like it would have fit at all. Now, if we would have, if they would have done cameo stuff differently, and we would have got something like, could you imagine if there had been a cameo or like Joseph Gordon Elliott, right? Yeah, like taking off the bat cow, like you see the Dark Knight, and like it's just a shot of him taking the cow off. People would have lost their minds. Um, I'm just, you know, like it's just like people are like Christian Bale, and it's funny because technically he is the most. Well, I guess not. It's so weird because I don't think he's the most recent Batman, but apart from Baffleck, but not because you have Pattinson. So it kind of goes Pattinson, Affleck, then Christian Bale. So it's like two Batmans back. It's weird to say that like that. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it has been 11 years. Well, it's, it's you know, Keaton's, Keaton's people's favorite Batman, and then Christian Bale is people's favorite Batman, and then Ben Affleck is people's favorite Batman. So like, I grew up and I've experienced all of them, and so, I do say that, that Affleck is my favorite Batman, but it's like, it just shows, like, how people can't let stuff go. We know that as Superman fans, people can't yeah. let Reeve go. But, I, I, you know, I was listening to some, uh, some of the podcasts talk about, like, there's this window of, like, how the nostalgia works about... 15 to 20 years, you know, is the best. If you go too, too much too forward, like it doesn't work as well. Cause they were talking about like Keaton, like how that, you know, works for a certain group of people having Keaton back. But then there's a whole audience that are just like, I don't care. And that's usually like people after us, you know? Um, right. And that's why I'm like, you know, Clooney, or I mean, not Clooney, technically, uh, Bale is it's been 11 years since he was Batman so think about that if you were like 10 years old seeing the Dark Knight Rises you're now 21 and that's your Batman oh absolutely there are people who Christian Bale is absolutely their Batman so I'm like it, it could have been cool to have something with him but he he doesn't seem the kind of person that would play ball and just do it for fun like yeah, it's it's not I, high enough art caliber for him. Yeah, I I like I said, I would have actually uh, I would have appreciated that more. Um, I did appreciate the George Clooney. I thought it was a really funny gag. I loved it at the I, end. I you know, but I would have appreciated Bale more as maybe more of a the serious tag on the end of the movie instead of like a laughable gag and then his tooth popping out. I would have I would have cut the tooth popping out. Like I hate that. I really do. Like I think it'd been cool if they could have got Christian Bale to do it and they did it kind of like a clue ending where he says, like, who the F are you? And it turns. And like some theaters get George Clooney, some theaters got Christian Bale. 
Some got Michael Keaton. <laughs> some because I feel like like you couldn't do Robert Pattinson because then everyone's like, oh my god, the Batman is going to be part of this universe now. You know what I'm saying? Like that wouldn't work. That's too soon. Um, poor Val Kilmer is too bad of health. You know. Um, but I just think that would have been kind of interesting. Or, or, dude, you know what really kind of funny? Heck, even a Batfleck would have been interesting if he'd have shown back up. <laughs> um, get the get David Mazus, David Mazus, who who was a uh... <laughs> dude. Just go all out, dude. Get David Mazus, who played him <laughs> on Gotham. Gotham. <laughs> yes, and then get the guy who did it on Titans, Ian whatever. Oh no. Ian Glenn. I, yeah, Ian Glenn, yeah. <laughs> you know how much I hate him as Bruce Wayne and everything? Like, yeah. Just just make it a, like every theater got a different punch ending. So it's just kind of like a ha-ha, like, you know, because we, we've pretty much realized, like, this isn't going to go anywhere and continue, and we've strayed from the original plan of what this movie is going to do. So could you imagine going to see the movie and be like, oh, my God, with George Clooney, ha-ha, and then you and I, like, went, like, the next day, and we're watching it, and all of a sudden, oh, shit, Christian Bale walks up. They were like, what the fuck? You know? yeah, right. <laughs> like, before the internet could catch up with everybody, like, and we realized it was, like, four four different endings, like, but anyways, yeah, I just feel like if Bale showed up, it's it becomes, like, oh, he's back, oh, my God, Christian Bale's back as Batman. If it was Pattinson, it's like, oh, man, they're bringing the Batman into this universe. Um, yeah, with the Clooney thing, it's kind of just like, oh, well, that means nothing. It's just, and it also kind of gives like this nice wink smile to Clooney in recognition because I enjoy George Clooney as Batman. I I think he pulls off a really good Bruce Wayne. And what I what I've liked hearing is I like hearing this debate now online about people saying that Batman and Robin is better than Batman Forever. And I find this fascinating. Hmm. Um, because they said Batman and Robin knew from the beginning what tone it was, and what it was going to be. You know, Joel Schumacher made it the way they wanted it. Um, but Batman Forever was trying to still be serious and dark, but with humor. And at times the tone is off because it was trying to do two things. I find that very interesting. Um, but Hey, we got some, well, Batman and Robin is certainly if you, if you play with all your action figures and you do all kinds of stuff, whatever you want to do going from one set piece to the next. It's true. <laughs> but all right. So now it is that time of the show where we talk about Superman and Lois. Because I told you we had a lot of weird tidbits to talk about. But Superman and Lois, episode 12, Injustice. Not the video game, people. Not the video game. It says, Lois and Clark clash with Jordan over his carelessness around using his powers in public. And finally, after 17 years behind bars, Lex James Luther is set to be released from prison. I'm just saying this. I pr- I picture James if he went to prison. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so we're, we'll just. If go. Only I had that pull. <laughs> we'll just go for whatever. All right. Um. We'll just start. This episode was good. It was interesting, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, Chrissy Beppo. I mean. Not enough of hers in this episode. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was really missed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> hardly recall. I'm just joking. You don't get to care. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kyle, man. Kyle Cushing. He carried this show on his back. Um, But no. Lex Luthor. I'm going to let you talk first. I've been talking a lot. I'll let you talk. Go. Um. Well, I mean, like, you brought up the Kyle Cushing thing. Like, there's a... There's a moment in this episode where he's talking to John and he kind of makes it seem in a way that could be taken like maybe you're getting special treatment because your dad is Superman. Um, and, and it, it got all the way back to, he was talking to Jordan about, uh, he was talking to Jordan about it and Clark heard and he went to Kyle and like a whole kind of like misunderstanding. I thought that, that was a common theme throughout this episode of people, um, you know, issues with communication. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, in this episode, Jordan just completely ignores any communication. Yeah. You know? Disobeying, uh, disobeying his parents and, and his granddad and, um, like purposefully, re- purposely re- revealing himself. Yeah, he does. And I mean, that comes from being a teenager and. I mean, when he landed there right next to the truck and everything, right next to the, uh, overpass, I was like, oh, you little shit. I mean, I- Part of it's coming from being a teenager in our day and age where, you know, you want attention, you want credit. And uh, it is just kind of funny because, like, he does have a mask and goggles and everything keeping him a little bit more, uh, you know, covered. But Yeah, and everybody calling him the Samaritan, Smallville it, Samaritan. There's a Superboy uh, term thrown in there. Yeah. So. But man, I want you to talk about Lex Luthor. No one cares about anything else in this episode. This is all that counts. <laughs> okay. So Lex Luthor is released from prison. He um, has made arrangements to have his release hidden. Um, so news outlets and people won't be uh, searching for him until after he's done what he deems necessary, which is walk from prison to the Kent farm to demand Lois um, retire. Because it was her words that put him away. He doesn't want to see her words ever printed again. Yes. Um, I thought it was interesting, like, because once again, this kind of makes me think, like, where's Metropolis? Where's Smallville? Where's the uh, Strikers Island? Yeah. It, it didn't look like it was on, on an island when he got released. He no. Just started, he just started walking. It looked like it was a uh, county over from Smallville. Like, he knew how long it would take him to walk there because Otis was to arrive shortly after he did. I like uh, how Otis appears um, in the episode, how he basically beats Otis into submission to being his minion. So He's got, like, the whole prison in, in submission, you know? Once again, um, Lex Luthor has a beard. This is just a new thing now. First, it starts off as a little small facial hair with Cryer. And I, I feel like John Cryer's Lex is awesome. I still think he's kind of my favorite. Um, until, But he stayed on Supergirl too long. They started to dumb him down like they did everybody on that show in the last season. But we'll let that go. Um, and then we got Titus Welliver with his big beard. Now we have Michael, um, how do you pronounce his last name? I don't want to mess it up, but um, with his beard, but he was blonde. You know, Lex is supposed to be a redhead, man. And we see him actually shave his head because he wants the clippers from Otis. And he tells him he's going to give them to He said, I'll give you five bucks for him. And then you find out, like, he's, they call him the devil. And what's interesting is when he goes to the warden and he tells the warden to dial this number. And the warden's like, that's my home number. That's my home number. And, like, basically he's got men at the warden's house ready to beat the, kill the warden's family. So the warden basically just turns over the prison to Lex. And we see the Lex having the guards beat the Otis and other inmates in. And what's interesting is he has them beaten in a way that he had told them earlier, like one, like you'll lose your teeth. You won't be able to walk. Yeah. The one guy's in the wheelchair. The other guy's got his, his jaw wired shut, trying to mm. talk through it. Mm-hmm. So, and then we see like Lex taking over and he, we see him shave his head. We see him like use some other prisoner as a, as a seat. <laughs> yeah. As a chair. And he, Freaking beat him. And he's been there for 17 years because he, he makes later when he confronts Lois and Clark, he, the boys, you got pregnant, had two boys. And we find out Lex has a daughter. He was 17. 14 years old. So I'm going to put James on the spot. <clears throat> James, do some math. <laughs> oh, 
is his daughter, 41. Uh, 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 James? His daughter, what? <laughs> sure want to do that math, buddy? Nah, three at 31. <laughs> this is why uh, I don't – James doesn't know how old he is or I let him do any of the accounting. <laughs> what are you doing? That's funny. Uh, but, so, oh, uh, you're just trying to make fun of me for what I did it before. Nah, I'm just messing with him. I can't, I can't, I can't do math when someone puts me on the spot. Like the kids will ask me stuff, and I'm like, uh, don't ask me. I have a mental block. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so his daughter is like 31, and we see a picture of her what she looked like back then. And I was like, man, what we needed was like some really cool, like. Reveal that Lex's daughter's like been around the whole time. We didn't know it was his daughter. But then I was like, there's no character other than Chrissy. Yeah. And and there's no way that that picture, that girl grows out to be Chrissy. (laughs) So that doesn't work. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, with Lex's daughter and Lex, um, just his whole demeanor. Like when he shows up the Kent farm and Jordan's upstairs listening. You know, Jonathan and Jordan are listening, and he's making threats and demands, and he's like, I'm going after Superman next. And I'm just like, nobody knows where Lex went. So what if Clark just heat vision and destroyed Lex and Otis and just, like, evaporated them forever? <laughs> I mean, Oops. if that was, if he was Ultraman. <laughs> Jordan just drops down and just... <laughs> and, and he's like, what? You're welcome. Flies off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what they did to us on Titans. Like, here's Lex Luthor. <laughs> there was Lex Luthor. Yeah. Um. So Blood yeah, from the inside out. But uh, what do you think about his Lex so far? Um. Well, I mean, he's definitely dark. You know, they've referenced him being like the devil. Um. Like, he's definitely an evil character. Uh, very malicious. Um, you know, the the fact of all the inmates standing at attention at their cells and one being his stool and stuff, like, I think it's very excessive in showing how um, how in control of everything he can be. Yeah. Do you like you know, his Lex so far? I like his portrayal so far. Um, you know the the way he's played the character, the the confidence, um, even when he's being beaten, you know, because he still has a plan in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I enjoy his portrayal. You know, that's I mean that's a little separate from his from the presentation <laughs> we're given. I'm not. I'm not 100% sold yet on him as Lex. And I say that same thing kind of how I felt about Titus. I didn't get enough time yet with him. But also, I need, I would love to get some flashback episodes or flashback scenes of him as Lex when he was more of the powerful businessman. Because this is after being in prison for 17 years and holding a grudge. And he's definitely harder edge because, I mean, they got that nice little heavy metal score when it starts with him, like. Like his own little rock score. And so I, I don't know. Like I just – to me, Lex is always the more dangerous when he's so loved by everybody, but yet we know who he truly is. Right. Um, that's what always – like this Lex Luthor can never be president. Like, and that's always something scary. So I, I don't know how I feel about him yet or – where I rank him in my Lexes, my Lex. Well, family. I mean, even the president, even the Lex who became president, um, had to fight against the things that he had been um, tried and and charged with before. You yeah. know, so yeah. So I don't know where I'd rank him in my lexicon of Lexes yet. Like I'm, I'm looking forward to because, like, you know, they are setting him up. Um, he'll be in the next episode, which is the last episode. Of the season, and then he'll be in next season. We hypothesize, so we will see, you know, where he goes and what becomes of him. But we see at the end of the episode, just staying with our Lex thread here, 
um, he goes down to Bruno's basement where zombified, I guess, because we're getting more of like a classic Bizarro eating rats. And then I guess he attacks Otis. Um, so sounds like he rips Otis apart. Mm hmm. What if, what if, what if he went down there and he just killed Lex? Like, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> the writers are like, crap, they just did this on Titans. We can't kill Lex after one episode. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to figure something else out. Oh, goodness. Um, but I mean, you know, most of the episode was just focused on Lex, you know, padding that out. Um, and the whole Jordan, um, you know, bragging about himself in a third person when Junior's like, man, there's a savior. And Jordan just makes the comment about, yeah, he's probably badass. Yeah, he's a hero. He's probably badass. And everyone got so mad about him saying that. And at the same time, I get it because if I'm just saying, if it hadn't come from Sarah, if it wasn't his emotions all tied up with all the Sarah crap. He probably wouldn't have said it. He'd be more humble about it. But he's so angry with her. And she's so, like, doesn't really care. Such a teenage girl. Towards his, like, feelings and stuff. Not like I hold a lot of anger towards, you know, teenage girls. Um. <laughs> better, better lose a little bit of that before you get a teenage daughter. Um. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> She's six going on 16. Yep. Um, That's how it's going to feel. Oh, my God. I know. Anyway, like, Sarah just annoys me so much of, like, her decisions and, like, complaining about, well, it's his too. If he's going to brag about it, like, I'm not going to keep a secret. I'm just like, he didn't say, I'm Superboy. Watch me fly. <laughs> you know? I'm just like, come on. Everyone's treating him as if he's walking around, like, strutting his stuff, like, Throwing that big energy around, like, look at me, guys. Look at me. Yeah, look what I can do as I made, fly. Yeah, that would be different. He made one comment through a third person. Yes, he shouldn't have done it. I get it, okay? But they're all talking like as if Jordan's going around like, I'm the man. I'm the man. Right. Well, I mean, as they as they know, they've, they've all been kind of like instructed to, you know, avoid the subject, push it to the side and change the subject. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's like, where I go into, like, I feel like this is all about miscommunication throughout the whole episode. Everyone's kind of just not communicating correctly because they're just preparing for the arrival of my mom, a.k.a. the devil. I mean, Lex. Um, she never listens to this show anyways. Uh, so, yeah. It was a good episode. It was one of those episodes where if it had been any other show... This is where we. This would have been the mid-season change, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where where we have like a villain for the first half of the season, and then it leads to the creation of the second villain, and then it goes into the the second half of the of the season with the second villain. Right. And um, this is not exactly like this is kind of a like last episode was kind of the end of the season ish, you know, and this is like the two part epilogue that's going to lead us into the next season. Right. Well, it's like, you know, the first season, it was stopping everybody from, like, being possessed by um, uh, the Eradicator and, and turned into Kryptonians um, to take over Earth. And then the second season was stopping um, the merger of the Earths. Like, at this point, there's not, like, this catastrophic Earth-ending... Um, event that we're trying to avoid coming in this final episode right thank you so it's, it's actually it's personal yeah it's it's small it's, and it's personal and there'll be some fight with bizarro superman something where bizarro superman will end up turning into doomsday or something you know it'll be a big brawl and this is where segal comes from the future and helps clark and we find out it's actually a krypton prequel <laughs> or krypton sequel nice that's my theory. Yeah, it it will never come true, but that's my head cannon right now. <laughs> hey, John... I mean, as it is, you know the way the way the worlds kind of look, the the production quality, um, 
you could you could make this a uh, down the line from 200 years ago on Krypton. Yeah, for real. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to think. Like, there wasn't. It's one of those, like there was a, like there wasn't a whole lot going on with the lowest story. That what we did get is a really good intro of just her in the healing process and Clark taking care of her, washing her hair and things. And um, yeah, it sounds if she's either writing in her own journal or she's writing her own story. Mm Kind of sounds like that's the way her narration was. But the the big, the big part of this was the Lex of it all and building him up and introducing him. And yeah, I mean, and, they couldn't think of anything bad, more badass than him walking. First thing him doing, walking to Lois. And during during a twister, okay, a twister comes out of in Sam Lane. You get you get some uh, Man of Steel flashback. Sam Lane getting out, getting people to an under overpass under yeah. under the overpass, you know. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, I was <laughs> in the back of my head. I was like, dang, how early did they know he wasn't coming back next season? They about to take Sam Lane out with a twister. <laughs> <laughs> like they they just went in and edited it and was like, wow. okay, they're like, we're gonna cut you out of the final episode. We're gonna have you just get sucked up by a twister. Um, and then of course, Clark and Jordan end up inside of it and trying to stop it. So, yep, they use their speed and their breath to stop the twister. I'm just kind of like I've watched the Flash way too much because I'm like, don't he shouldn't he just run around the opposite direction like Barry would? You know, like, like fly around it and just dissolve it. Well, if you remember in the Superman Returns game, when you have to no. fight the Twister, no, you have to you have to use your heat vision and your cold breath to balance it out, so that way the 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 crazy spinning dissipates because you you fix the the, the warring of the hot and the cold air. Guy, yeah, guy, guy can't do math. That's breaking down the science of hot and cold inside a twister. I mean, he's he's a man of many talents. People. You got me on a night when I'm burned out. <laughs> I, I love James. I'm just playing with him. I'm not trying to put him down. We're just having fun here. I, uh, no, don't I'm you always, remember? Don't tired. you remember the end of that game? No, I don't. Oh, okay, I don't. well, I do. Because I, I, it was horrible. Because the final boss was a twister. I I, I played it hit and miss because at that time where I just. I didn't own a video game system. My brother did. So I think I only owned like Mortal Kombat, um, Armageddon, and a scene at movie trivia. Yeah. And I rented the Superman Returns from Blockbuster. Uh, I mean, it's a cool thing when your Superman character can't die, but you've got to save the city. Like the city is the life meter. It, it, it kind of sucks that that game you can't buy and like download and play on an Xbox One. Like I looked. It sucks. Yeah, like you a, need a 360 to play. Just like I need a 360 to play my Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Some bull crap, man. That's how they get you. Well, they they had it, okay? Somebody had it, and they did, like, a remaster. And then there was something to do with the rights through, like, Raven or Ravensoft or whatever the company was. And so, like, they remastered it, and they sold it digitally on, like, PlayStation 4 and um, Xbox One. Um, but now they no longer have the rights for it so you can't actually buy it anymore but it was done in a way that you can only play that version you can't play like a backwards compatible disc from the xbox 360 so i can't play that on my xbox one <laughs> i think that's just wrong that's a whole nother story because uh bringing it back to batman like all things in life they seem to do uh they're doing like a uh the remastered of all the arkham games are coming to switch but they still can't remaster and put on a new edition of Arkham Origins, which I really loved Arkham Origins. I think it's a combination of it was the first Arkham game I got to buy new. I love that it's set at Christmas. I love the snow in Gotham, and I was just so hyped when it came out for that winter feel, you know? And yeah. I hate that they have not made it available for, like, digital or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, they it, haven't put... Um... It is backwards compatible, though. So if you do have, I don't know about PlayStation 4, but if you do have an Xbox One, you can get an X, uh, an Xbox 360 version of Arkham Origins, and you can play it and download the, uh, the, the um, 
backwards compatible the pe- uh, compatibility. It like upgrades the graphics and things like that. But you can play Arkham Origins on your Xbox One. Well, let's just go on the GameStop tomorrow. Because <laughs> um, I bet they have it cheap. All right, thanks, James. Peace. You're welcome. <laughs> a, a GameStop's right. closed. You might want to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, game game on is my place for like if it's if it's past the ner- the newest gen, I'm going to game on. Okay, so let's get into some comics here. I have not finished Superboy three. Did you finish it? I'm just I'm not really like I'm not into the story as much as I wanted to be, so I just haven't been following it as hard. Have you? Did you read it? I did. I did read it. Give us a, give it, give us your James quick review. Lay it James on. quick review. Um, so throughout this story, um, John is basically uh, you know we start uh, we start where they're on the run from the the Coon Space um, Force. Uh, Superboy is taking on <laughs> the whole armada, um, but they it's him and the Cosmeteers. What's that? It's a very James thing to do. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, I mean, sometimes you got to take on an army by yourself. Amen, brother. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the one guy is a technopath uh, for the Cosmeteers, so they are able to um, escape from the the Kund army. Um, they uh, they have a bunch of the experiments done by Dominator X, all freed um, and safe. Uh, they're on a they're safe on a planet. Uh, Connor and um, Trav. I believe is his name. Uh, they have kind of, uh, they've had a contentious relationship, so they're kind of like, we've been at this for weeks up here, you know, and you're still like treating me like I'm an enemy, like I'm a weapon. And, um, they kind of smooth things over. Um, Dominator X has his new, his, his final, his masterpiece. Um, he calls it Infinity. Um, he's like splicing all of the gene, uh, all of the genetic, um, materials into one creature, I guess to be the most powerful creature. Um, so Superboy ends up, um, uh, leaving, heading back to help some of the other Cosmeteers, uh, and leaves Trav with some people and, uh, they say you you lied and that you know you have to make a deal with us before the lantern gets here. And uh, Superboy finds out that the uh, lanterns never got the alert, so he has some questions for for Trav and uh, Lantern. Uh, let's see. But I had a yeah. Here we go. Uh, Green Lantern of Sector Two Eight Two Eight. Um, he arrives to where um, the distress signal was sent from, and the the people, the creatures there who are supposed to be arrested, have been obliterated. And uh, Green Lantern says, "Alert any lanterns in the nearby sectors. The Cosmeteers are wanted for murdering prisoners of the Green Lantern." And we're bringing them in. Next, Infinity Strikes. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so Superboy in this story, um, it's he he's wanted to kind of like find his new place, but um, in this story, people kind of point out like he's kind of repeating what he's done before: joined a team, save some people, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, I mean, it's still a story about Superboy trying to find his place in the, in the universe and among the super family. It's true. It is true. So this, this one was a quick read. What did you think of Okay. You read Steelworks number one? I did read Steelworks number one. I did too. 
I liked it. I'm intrigued by this book. I like uh, I like John Henry. I think he's a good character. So I just I don't my, my tablet is dead thanks to my daughter. I didn't realize it was at one percent when I brought it in here. So my comments were digital. So oh, okay. Um I can't grab him to pull him up. I'm just <laughs> gonna do that. And I was like, Oh, I didn't pay enough attention to see that it's dead. So thanks, daughter. Yeah. Well, we got John Henry Irons introducing um, Steelworks, starting it up. Um, there is a guy who kind of sees the, the the news broadcast on TV, and he's not happy to see it. Um, uh, he is talking to Natalie about um, trying not to trying to have the world safe to be in without the supers. Um, you know, that everybody's just looking, uh, always looking up to see who's going to save them instead of, you know, his, his goal is for people to be safe without the supers. Look up to be saved from James. <laughs> Only James can save us now. Um, we got, uh, Lana and John Henry together. So. Kind of see what's, uh, that that relationship is still continuing. Good. Yep. As it should. That's what one thing I've been needing from the TV series. I feel like they're seeding, but we'll not see anything happen with. Yeah. Um, thing that I think is interesting is, uh, uh he says, uh, get a sense of what the rest of the supers think of the plan. And she said, and Lana says, and what if they're not enthused? He says, well, it's not a dictatorship. It's a democracy. I think, I think the supers would be happy that people are safe, that mm -hmm. they don't need, or that they're safe from if they have to take action. You know, the, uh, the structure of buildings, the strength of the materials, um, was part of the demonstration that Steelworks had in the back of, uh, the action books leading up to this. Um, this guy who threw his cup at the TV is walking. Uh, he gets picked up by um, uh, a guy named Walker, I believe was his name. Um, he takes him. He says that he purchased all of Ameritech, um, all of the, the weapons manufacturer that was using John Henry's designs when he quit. Yeah. Um, they were using him for military applications, and he didn't want that. Um, so they end up doing an experiment on this guy, and he can go through walls, but not his clothes. <laughs> Which also was... like James. <laughs> yes, I can walk through walls and leave my clothes behind. It's scary. Dude. It's a fun <laughs> trick. <laughs> it makes that scene in the flash a whole different ball game when you're hanging out with James. <laughs> I would never do it on the unsuspecting and unwilling. <laughs> Next time you need to watch what you define as unsuspecting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing people. James is cool. Um anyways, Steelworks R and D uh intruder alert. Um and uh Natalie has all of the Security, all security divisions, um, and they there's an explosion at the front door and next collateral damage. So, not sure what all the explosions are from. They right. kind of end there. The guy, the guy runs away, and I don't know what his what his powers are or what's going to happen. He was listening to Baby Shark. He was running away. <laughs> Baby shark. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Exactly. Yeah. They were playing that and throwing candy for the kids at the wedding. I just like somebody posted like in 20, like 10 years, that song's going to like drop out of club and people are just going to lose their junk. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. All right. So anyways, so Steelworks is cool. We did read Superman number five. I... I liked Superman number five. This book was, I wanted to message you as soon as I finished reading it because I was so excited, 
But you hadn't read it yet? So ah, was, yeah, I read it this morning. So I was so bummed, because I was like, oh my god, James. Yeah, it was a really good book. It just, I don't, like, it just, we, we do enough of these, like, you start to see patterns in the story where you're like, okay. Um, but man, so this book, I'm going to try to do it by memory, okay? Because I don't have it in front of me, thanks to Sayla. Um <laughs> Basically, it starts off with him fight. It starts off with like a quick condensed version of how Jimmy met Siobhan and how they fell in love. And they hadn't said it to each other yet. And you feel like Dr. Farm had came to her and basically said she was going to help him stop Superman or she he would kill everyone she loves. So it means she's going to he's going to kill Jimmy and Silver or not Silver Banshee. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Silver Banshee. I don't know. Too many colors. Um. Basically, is fighting Superman, and it was really good because um, we see like Jimmy's trying to stop Superman from hurting her, and it basically he's able to stop her, and they find out what's going on. Supercorp has a gun to like take out every one of Superman's villains. <laughs> he's like, "Do you have a gun for everything?" Like, yes. <laughs> right and yeah he's like how have you already produced all this stuff and basically he gets away for her to scream into it and you know get out her scream and it damages his super hearing he still has his hearing but it damages his super hearing and earlier in the book there's this part with clark talking about hearing and how he hears everything and um So, and then it damage, um, it damages his hearing. And I'm trying to remember because I don't want to jump to the end yet. But basically, at the end, he's at the club seeing Siobhan's van with Jimmy and Lois on a date, and the, it's parallel. Like you have two panels per page. One's Clark, one's Lex, and Lex is going back to a cell and he's trying to talk to Superman, but Clark can't hear him, and we see how happy Clark is. Um, with everything because he's not, you know, he doesn't hear the whole world. He hasn't, he doesn't block it out. And basically, the book ends with Lex getting shanked in prison and bleeding out, saying, "Save me, Superman!" And he can't hear him. And I was like, "Dag, that's good." Yeah, that's a cliffhanger ending, especially since um, to be continued in Superman twenty 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 three annual in August, and yeah. Superman number six in September. Because night terrors. Yeah, I'm. I figure how I'm trying to figure out how we're going to do this. Um, with night terrors, if we're just going to kind of touch on it, or we'll wait till like the event's over and then go back and hit the event or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, I definitely I'm trying to figure out why they're doing night terrors in the middle of, of July, <laughs> like June, July. Like, yeah, it should have been lined up for October. Should have been a September, September October. October. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we'll we'll figure out how we're gonna do this because yeah, it's a definitely a cliffhanger to leave you on. But I like seeing Silver Banshee. She's definitely a character. I feel it needs explored more. All right. Did, the only other thing I have is Superman Lost three and four, which I don't even I read them, but I don't remember it. Like. I'm I'm not really enjoying the title as much. Um I feel like it would be I don't know. Maybe if it wasn't like a twelve issue thing, isn't that what's supposed to be like twelve issues? I think so. I think that's what it says on the cover. I feel like maybe maybe this is one that I just need to read in one sitting. Because I feel like there's a lot of emotional weight it's trying to build up to. But I feel like reading it every month little by little. I'm not connecting as much and with his journey, you know, cause we hear these, we have these parts that are kind of like detaching us from him talking with Lois, but then he talks about how he had to hold his breath for like two years, you know, and floating in space for two years and just like, that is scary. Yeah. So, um, 
it it does have an intensity to it about things happening. Like in this issue, the the white suit that he's wearing is like a solar battery suit. Um, and he even has um, a comment that it's um, it's like trying to run uh, it's trying to run something with like a small um, with a small charge. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's interesting, but I, I'm gonna put this to a vote with you, James. This is like he says it says like using a pair of double A's to power a Tesla. Mm-hmm. So the the suit is supposed to help absorb any solar radiation as he's you know like floating through space. I kind of want to put it out there to you if you want to continue to do this by issue or just wait till it's done and then just do a whole episode on it. Um, I mean, it kind of depends. I mean, this, so this issue, like, two was a little bit, was a little bit, you know, boring. This, this issue actually had me a little bit more. Um, the, uh, the space dolphins that, uh, that we know of mostly from Lobo. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lobo loves dolphins and he, uh, there is a church to the space dolphins or something. Um, that he was like a part of. Um, so like Clark uses them and um, like uses them to be able to traverse across space much more quickly than he would uh, have been able to because it was like so many thousand light years from earth, um, how long it would take him to get there. Um, and Traveling with these beings, these space dolphins, he actually covers quite a quite a large distance. Mm-hmm. Um, but he gets to this planet that um, is is hidden uh, by some sort of storm uh, that kind of traps the dolphins, and he finds out that the dolphins actually feed on a um, a some sort of metazoa protozoa like creatures on this mm-hmm. planet um, who can actually like bond together to create like they create giant uh, giant sand or stone Superman and Lois because um, they've kind of got like a te- telepathy thing going on um, so he's like he wants to he wants to save them from the dolphins and get the dolphins uh, free of the trap to try and still use them to be able to get home. And they end up taking off with without him, and um, he can't keep up. And he seems, like, lost in space again. But this time without all of his, all of his belongings, um, his uh, his rig that he was carrying with him that was helping him survive uh, got caught in their wake and dragged away. Yep. So there there's a there's a level of intensity to this story. There um, is, and I think that's why. Like I'm saying, like I kind of want to just wait till it's done and sit and just do the experience the entire journey. And yeah, like, we can do that. Because like I feel like I get hit with this intensity, but then it's so long to the next book that I have to like get myself back there. But I feel like if I was just reading it continual, I would just be there. So that's what I'm saying. Like I, that's what I would prefer to do. Um but anyways. So all right. The only other thing I have marked down is World's Finest 15 and 16. Did you read either of those yet? So 15 is out on the uh, app. 16 is not out. 16 is not on the app. That's right. Yeah. And neither was number four. Superman lost number four. Yeah. That's just released. Since we're just doing the app stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a few books here that we talked about that we had our hands on. That we we got when they came out, but these other books we're talking about on Ultra because I love having Ultra. I do too. I mean, I've been I'm doing a deep reread of like Rebirth and like the Titans, anything connected to like Wally and Barry. So I just consume my Flash stuff. 
Mm. Well, that's kind of a big deal um, in in uh, the dawn of DC because uh, there is no Justice League right now. Titans is kind of stepping up. Yep, I have been reading Titans. Uh, yeah, I read. Uh, I don't. I don't think I read issue two yet, but I did read issue one. I think issue two just came out this week. It did. But yeah, I'm. I'm enjoying World's Finest, and it's kind of weird because like it, it's like it plays into stuff, but at the same time, like it's still kind of in the past. So, um, yeah. Not, so, uh, this I'm issue not, was kind of cool. We have the um the Ultra Metamorpho or um. Yep, Amazo. Um, yeah, Meta Amazo or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's uh, he's too powerful for Robin, but he's uh, being able, he's being able to be Kryptonite to weaken Superman. He's not too powerful for James Cole. Metamorpho and uh, Batman show up, and Batman's wearing a suit of armor of all of the Metal Men. He's able to rescue all of the Metal Men from their vats. And, and be able to create them in armor. Um, there is a, a robot um, mechanic who is like taking over people's minds, um, taking over uh, robot man's minds. We've got an appearance of Doom Patrol here. Mm hmm. Um, they're all fighting for, they're all fighting against, uh, this, uh, Ultra Amazo. Um, and Metamorpho creates himself as, like, a lead suit to fight against so he can be protected against the, uh, uh, the kryptonite. But he splashes acid on them. And that automatically removes Metamorpho from Superman. Pretty sad. Yeah. Uh, Robin got a bunch of acid on his leg and they call for a retreat. And for some reason, we are in Colorado with the Challengers of the Unknown. Because Mark Wade. <laughs> yeah. Fighting off a giant, fighting off a giant mech. It's only one page. But I mean, he brought in the Doom Patrol. And Titans and Metamorpho and Amazo and all of that within this run. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying World's Finest. I love Dan Mora's art. Um, the art's great. I've been reading the Shazam. Him and Mark Wade are doing where Mark Wade just like brought it back to the character. He's like they just call him the Captain now. He's the Captain. Uh, Which I, I feel bad. That's on my list. I feel bad because I'm just like, this character has no real name, you know. Like it lost Captain Marvel. Um, thank you, Marvel Comics. Um, you know, can't say Shazam, and uh, people are like, oh, you can't say his, you know, the word without it taking his power. And I'm like, but I feel like it's when you say it with intention. You know, like what you're trying to say, because how he calls down the lightning sometimes and uses it as a weapon. But, but yeah, they're just like he's the captain now. I'm like, okay, all right, I'll roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. well, Superman and Batman are they wake up and they are imprisoned with a bunch of people, a bunch of tech people. Um, Advanced robotics people. Uh, Ivo is even prisoner. Um, and so is Amazo. Uh, and they are all imprisoned by Amazo 2.0. New Mazo. Yeah, I like, I like New Mazo. <laughs> I thought that was funny. New Mazo. Um, Robin is trying to find Supergirl. Um, believing that Supergirl can help him since Batman and Superman are lost. Um, and the Batmobile is, uh, taken over. Gets that purple light like all the eyes had 
that were being controlled earlier, um, like Robot Man. Mm-hmm. And the Batmobile is driving head on to a wall. It's rise of the Robot or- Overlords. It's the end of World's Finest. You know that uh, he's doing a World's Finest Super Sons book? Good. Coming up in a couple of months. Mark Wade is. Good. So, yeah. It's kind of getting a big old resurgence there at DC with a lot of books. Yeah. Mark Wade is back and reshaping. I mean, I feel like Mark Wade kind of just is helping reshape DC with the dawn of DC. Um, right. I mean, it kind of seems that way. It's, you know, he, he wrote a lot of the Lazarus Planet and is writing a lot of books uh, post-Lazarus Planet. And and his uh, World's Finest and Batman vs. Superman run has helped lead up to that Lazarus Planet event. Yep, he did. It was the devil Naza surprised us all. Yeah. By, by being important. We're like, dang it. He pulled a fast one on us. <laughs> all right here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all we got. We're all kind of caught up for now. Um, like I said, Superman Lost, we're going to we're gonna wait, and we'll do it as an entire episode and just really kind of dive into the meat of the story and really kind of let that story connect with us. Right. I, I think the idea of him, you know, being gone for 20 years to him, said, but for her it not being but a second. It's like uh, a, it's like the Odyssey in a way. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's a very impressive, a very interesting concept, very interesting idea, but, um, you know, it's, it's kind of the journey as a whole, I think is the, is the, how you want to reflect on it as opposed to um, each and every step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. We are now going to curl up and fight crime. Ready, James? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no. fight, fight crime in my dreams. Yeah, that's what I do. You don't fight crime in your dreams? It's flying around, kicking Sometimes. butt, taking names? I do. But all right, everybody. Uh, tune in next week as James and I will uh, be excited for the finale of Superman Lois. And then July is going to kick off, and we'll be reviewing, of course, my adventures with Superman. But we got some fun activities, some lively discussions coming up in July. I hope everyone enjoyed Flash Week. And listen to our past episode where we talk to Mr. Black Lightning himself, Cress Williams. Until then, remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash crypto. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth justice and hope remember to check out krypton report on all social media platforms go to linktree.com slash krypton report and find out all of our we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on press play podcast network hello brooks here with the books with brooks monthly book club podcast here's how books with brooks works we read one book a month and then we talk about it Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in.
Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.